Hello, this is Sanit here, and welcome to the very first Star Wars The Black Series Rundown. Now, the Rundown series started on my channel with Marvel Legends, where I took a look at the entire year's worth of figures and kind of critiqued each one of them on a scale of 1 to 5 and just gave brief opinions on them and kind of talked about figures I didn't get and just take an overview of everything released in the year. So, on the Black Series front, which this video is featuring, we had 73 figure releases this year. Uh, 36 of those were retail, 37 of those were exclusives, and I picked up 44 of them. Uh, we're going to go over each individual figure, uh, but this year was kind of significant for Star Wars in a lot of ways. We had the final film of the Skywalker saga, being the Rise of Skywalker, also the final film of the sequel trilogy. We had the first live-action TV series with The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. We also still had a second season of Star Wars Resistance, and only one Resistance figure released in the Black Series line, so no one apparently cares about Resistance. And of course we had the Jedi Fallen Order video game, which is the first EA Star Wars game that was pretty much universally loved. Take that as you will in the comments. Uh, but on that topic, fear not, there will be no plot spoilers for The Rise of Skywalker, The Mandalorian Season 1, or Jedi Fallen Order, aside from the fact that characters exist. If you don't want to know that characters exist and have an action figure, then you might be in the wrong hobby, but uh, we're only going to talk about the characters as figures, not so much as characters. I will be featuring quotes of characters, and if those are spoilers for you, I'm sorry, but that is the way I'm proceeding. Um, but I'm not assuming that everyone's consumed all Star Wars media, and I don't want a toy review to be impactful into your watching experience of the series. At the end of the video, we will take a look at the top 10 figures of the year decided by me, just personal picks, or the, I usually start with the highest scores and go from there. Without further ado, let's begin. First figure released this year is number 78, Mim Mim Trooper Han Solo. Now, this was from Solo a Star Wars Story, a movie I really loved, but it wasn't a figure I was that interested in, and I didn't end up picking it up. I kind of was hoping it would go on sale, but I never got the chance to get it on a discount, so I just ended up skipping it. Once you join Crimson Dawn, you cannot leave. Figure number 79 of the line is Dryden Voss from Solo A Star Wars Story. A great figure with a great likeness to Paul Bettany and a really cool paint changing gimmick that allows his scars to glow red under cold conditions, in addition to his daggers doing the same. Really great figure, one of my favorites of the year, a 5 out of 5. Figure 80 is Vice Admiral Holdo from The Last Jedi. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't really have a problem with Holdo as a character overall, but not one of my favorites and kind of not an interesting action figure to me, so I just decided that I didn't really need her for my display shelf, and so I didn't get her. I was not elected to watch my people suffer and die while you discuss this invasion in a committee. Number 81 is Padme Amidala based on her appearance in Star Wars Attack of the Clones. Now this is I think the most iconic and most action oriented Padme look and I love that the cape is removable if you kind of tweak it over the head and the option of having two different guns with two different hands to fit them is fantastic. Finally glad to have Padme in the line, it's been a very long time asking for this figure and she turned out absolutely fantastic. Uh, there are some weird articulation limitations that happen with the female Star Wars figures so she's a 4 out of 5. In the name of the Galactic Republic of the Senate, you are under arrest, Chancellor. Number 82 is Jedi Master Mace Windu, based on his appearance from Revenge of the Sith. A fantastic figure with great articulation, a wonderful likeness to Samuel L. Jackson, as well as having a Jedi robe, which is something I think everyone should come with. And overall, a 5 out of 5, no doubt. Roger, roger. After many clone troopers and variants, we have number 83, the battle droid. Something for them to finally fight. Uh, it's one of the figures I've been asking for for years, and he's absolutely fantastic in the sense that it's accurate to the battle droid design. This B1 battle droid, as based on the Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones designs, is very good at replicating that design. However, due to that design, there are stability issues, there's a lot of other problems that come up, which is the nature of it. Though, being able to fold into the storage position is really amazing. <laughs> Figure 84 is C110P, also known as Chopper from Star Wars Rebels. The really plucky and slightly homicidal droid from the Rebels Ghost Crew is a figure that a lot of people really wanted, including myself, and has absolutely nailed it. Alternate legs, really cool blast effect, it takes a small character and makes him feel like he's worth $20, and for that he gets a 5 out of 5. You were right, Master. The negotiations were short. Figure 85 is Obi-Wan Kenobi, based on his appearance from The Phantom Menace as a Jedi Padawan. Absolutely fantastic Ian McGregor face sculpt. I'm hoping we see Episode 3 Obi-Wan kind of redone because they've really gotten much better at doing these face prints. 
And honestly, it sells the figure. In addition to having butterfly shoulders and a lot of new articulation, the only thing he's really lacking is a Jedi robe. So that's why he gets a four out of five. This is very close to a perfect Obi-Wan. How we choose to fight is just as important as what we fight for. Number 86, Ezra Bridger from Star Wars Rebels Seasons 1 and 2. Specifically more closer to Season 2 since he has the lightsaber. Um, really great figure, really great uh, animated character brought to a real world type line. I love the merging of aesthetics where it takes an anime character and puts it in to match the rest of the lineup. And it's absolutely pulled off here. Great figure with great articulation. Now come on Hasbro, gives us Zeb in 2020. Ezra gets a 5 out of 5. I'm a woman who doesn't believe in sure things. Dr. Shelley Afro joins the line at number 87, the first of the new Marvel Comics characters to actually make it to the Black Series line after her vintage collection debut in 2018. I'm absolutely stoked that she made it in. It's one of my favorite characters of the current Marvel Comics run, and I'm so happy that she's not alone. But overall, Afra, despite being fantastic, does have some balance issues, which does knock her down to a 4 out of 5. Number 88 is BT-1, also from the Dr. Aphra slash Darth Vader slash other Star Wars comics. Uh, this is a character who works kind of like a murderous R2-D2, so they did use the R2-D2 mold as a base, which means he is underscaled and has weird things like the rotating third leg. Now, however, that does not make him a bad figure. In fact, the upgrades and armaments to him make him really cool, and I love that all the weapons can be displayed fully out or closed away. Four out of five. I'm a protocol droid specialized in etiquette, customs, translation, and torture. Number 89 is Triple Zero, also from the Marvel Star Wars comics. A great figure using the Forlom body uh, upgrade of the C-3PO body, so he has of course elbow joints. There is some re restricted articulation, which does bring down the figure a little bit, but overall he's fantastic, so 4 out of 5. Number 90 is Supreme Leader Kylo Ren from The Rise of Skywalker. I own a lot of Kylo Ren figures, and unless one does something really cool, I don't really feel like buying another one. That's the story. Actually, the droid's not for sale. Number 91 in the line is Rey and Dio from The Rise of Skywalker. These are two fantastic figures packaged together, much like how Rey initially came with BB-8 during The Force Awakens. She now comes with Dio, which is the perfect way to release him. This is a new look for Rey, and on top of that, her best yet. Honestly, a great figure that I can't really find any flaws with, so she gets a 5 out of 5. <coughs> Number 92 is the Sith Trooper from Rise of Skywalker. A really striking design, all red armor. Some good articulation improvements on the First Order Trooper design that we've had for many years now. And honestly, a pretty great figure, but he just has some balance issues, so he's a 4 out of 5. You know, I've been alone for a while. Just hiding. That's no way to live, especially for a Jedi. Number 94 in the line is Cal Kestis from Jedi Fallen Order. This is his default appearance in the game, and he's also accompanied with his little droid friend BD-1. A great figure with a great pack-in, and honestly something that could be slightly improved. So I'm going to give him a 4 out of 5, and I'd like to see maybe the Poncho version of Cal in the near future. I can bring you in warm, or I can bring you in cold. Number 94 is The Mandalorian from Star Wars The Mandalorian Season 1, specifically the first episode. Uh, this is a great figure of a great design that just invokes like a western cowboy bounty hunter hero, even if he's not necessarily a hero. A great figure with great articulation and very, very little issues, if at all, which is why he's getting a 5 out of 5. I've carried so much hate for you. Number 95 is the second sister Inquisitor, our first Inquisitor and also the main villain of Jedi Fallen Order. Fantastic looking figure, only a couple things, some loose lightsaber blades and some balance issues, the only things holding her back, but otherwise a fantastic figure that makes me want more Inquisitors, so she gets a 4 out of 5. Boutini. Number 96 is the off-world Jawa from Season 1 of The Mandalorian. This striking image of a Jawa in different colors than we're used to now has a soft goods robe, which is much better than the plastic goods of the regular Jawa we've gotten before, and hopefully we get an update. This is a $20 figure that does not come with a lot of accessories, so he gets a 4 out of 5 just for pricing. 97 is the First Order Stormtrooper Riot Patrol version. I already have every part of this. They increased articulation slightly, but it wasn't something I needed. I don't remember where I'm from. Number 98 is Janna from The Rise of Skywalker, a brand new character and a great visual distinction from the rest of the Star Wars lineup. No one else looks like Janna, 
in terms of costuming and weapons. The fact that she's using a bow and arrow is pretty amazing. And that makes her a very unique figure. Uh, she just has some stability issues, but otherwise, great likeness, great articulation. Four out of five. They fly now? They fly now. The First Order Jet Troopers, number 99 in the line, squeaking in just before that wonderful 100. Uh, he is a absolutely great figure that replicates a cool design in Rise of Skywalker, and honestly, I really like it. I wasn't expecting to because I wasn't a fan of the helmet, but honestly, great figure, 4 out of 5. Right now, I'm a rebel pilot who needs to help his friends. Learning to be a Jedi will come later. Luke Skywalker is number 100 in the line. Any surprise? Not really. The Luke Skywalker Yavin ceremony should be a big benchmark in the line being 100, but the fact that a better version of this figure that comes with more than just a blaster and a medal already exists out there in, in relative ease of getting, and that is why I have to rank him at a 3 out of 5. After the imps were gone, the politics started. It's not what I signed up for. Number 101 is Cara Dune from The Mandalorian Season 1. A great character and a great action figure said character who doesn't have balance issues. She's like one of the only female characters in the line do not have that problem. Great sculpt, great likeness, great articulation, and great accessory count including very tiny things like a knife in her boot and a pistol on her side. Cara Dune is a 5 out of 5. Red 2 standing by. Number 102 is Wedge Antilles, appropriately 102. A figure I've been wanting ever since they released X-Wing Luke way back in 2013. Uh, just wonderful likeness to the character with the helmet on. He looks just perfect as Wedge. And considering he is the most well-respected rebel pilot to never have died during the original trilogy, I'm so glad he got an action figure. And honestly, it works at the smaller scale uh, for Luke because turns out Wedge isn't that tall. So you learn something every day. And he's a four out of five. Your lightsabers will make a fine addition to my collection. The first deluxe figure of the line to be general retail is General Grievous. The irony here is that I don't think he ever made it to Walmart or Target, but he made it to literally everything including Best Buy and Barnes and & Noble, so I'm considering more of a general release than a fan channel exclusive. That being said, this is a great figure as a representation of General Grievous. While I wasn't sure about it looking at the pictures going into it, once I had it in hand, I absolutely realized this is the General Grievous that fits with this line in its aesthetics, and while there's still going to be some improvements here and there, I do have to give him a 4 out of 5. Next up, we discuss a new subset of the line called the Archive Series. This is a series of re-releases with slightly updated paint and modifications. I didn't pick up any Archive releases, but I did want to show the figures off because they are something that were released this year. So Wave 1 contained X-Wing Luke Skywalker, IG-88, Bosk, and Boba Fett, all early figures of the line. The three bounty hunters, of course, being the ones that were previously released, which is appropriate since Forlom, Zuckus, and Dengar all come out in 2018. So this was a good companion piece. And Luke being the first figure of the line, he's not as easy to get anymore, so it's nice to see these come out again. Wave 2 of the Archive series included Anakin Skywalker from Revenge of the Sith, the Scout Trooper for the Imperial Army, Yoda in his Dagobah appearance, and Darth Maul from The Phantom Menace. All figures that did need a re-release. I think it's nice to have the Scout Trooper outside of the bike as well, since that makes army building a bit easier. Also of note, Anakin did have a new neck assembly and some slightly shorter legs to scale the figure correctly, and is, out of all of them, the one I may have picked up the most. I just never got the chance. Oh, I assure you. This battle station is fully operational. Our first Amazon exclusive is Emperor Palpatine, appearing in Return of the Jedi, in his throne. Now, not only does he come with the throne, he comes with lightning hands, his cane, three different heads for three different Palpatine expressions. Absolutely fantastic set. I can't say anything bad about. Five out of five. I skipped the Sith Trooper carbonized version, which was an Amazon exclusive. I didn't like any of the carbonized versions. They're metallic painted special edition figures that came out for Triple Force Friday. I had no interest in any of them. R2-D2, you know better than to trust a strange computer. Our second Amazon exclusive is a two-pack of Chewbacca and C-3PO in their Empire Strikes Back looks. Chewbacca's got that wonderful parted hair, and C-3PO comes apart uh, in a really cool move. 3PO actually can remove all of his limbs and be replaced with small wire pieces, and he comes with a mesh backpack for Chewbacca to carry him around. This is an absolutely fantastic set that, while it does feature a lot of reuse in the form of Chewbacca's body and 3PO's limbs, the way that this all comes together as a set is really brilliant, and it's the only way I think this could have been released. This definitely couldn't have been a general retail. It needed to be something like an Amazon exclusive, and I absolutely love it, so it's a 5 out of 5. 
manufacturer's protocol dictates that I may not be captured. IG-11 is the first Best Buy exclusive Star Wars figure and first Best Buy exclusive for Hasbro in general, a figure that's mostly reused of IG-88. He does have a lot of great likeness to the character from the series, especially with the bandolier straps added to him. Uh, overall, he moves exactly like he does in the series itself, and that makes him a great figure, but because of the limited articulation and lack of accurate hands, he is a 3 out of 5. This is the way. The Heavy Infantry Mandalorian, aka Paz Vizsla, is a Best Buy exclusive figure that is also a deluxe figure, and he's great. Uh, while some may be kind of worrying about the $30 price point, having him in hand, he's beefy, he's chunky, he's heavy, he's got a lot of great maneuverability, which, considering he's a Mandalorian in armor, is pretty impressive. Overall, a 5 out of 5. There's nothing here for me now. That's what I said when I left this place. Let's hope I was wrong. Coming from the pages of the Marvel Star Wars comics and making great companion pieces to Aphra and her droids, we have Luke Skywalker, based on his Skywalker Strikes appearance, named after the first volume of the series. This was a European convention exclusive that made it as a fan channel exclusive in North America. I found it available at GameStop, ThinkGeek, and plenty of online retailers, and absolutely I think that anyone should pick this up over the standard Luke that came out in the line as the Yavin Ceremony. You don't get the medal, but instead you get a lightsaber, his blaster, the Journal of Obi-Wan Kenobi in its case, as well as the blaster helmet, uh, probe training droid, and a blast effect for the lightsaber. So many cool things at very little of an upcharge. Fantastic release, 5 out of 5. Please note the white shirt Luke Skywalker here is the 2015 release and is not included in the set. Should we arrest the Hut, Senator? Commander Fox was a surprise release on For Triple Force Friday. Uh, this is a figure that I didn't expect to come out, no one expected to come out really. There was some listings for it and then he just appeared. He originally came out only at GameStop but has now made it around as a fan channel exclusive, which is fantastic because he's a great figure. Building on the already excellent uh, Captain Rex body mold, he's a great version of a Phase 2 Commander Fox and I'm so happy to have him, 5 out of 5. The next set of exclusives are for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, the land within Disneyland and the land within Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now, because these are theme park exclusive sets and they haven't been made available online, I don't have them yet. I personally am planning a trip to Disneyland's Galaxy's Edge in October of this year. Uh, they were 70 bucks a piece and they are considered four packs officially, even though it seems to be mostly three figures and a small figure. So the figure sets we have are a droid set featuring C-3PO, R2-D2, BB-8, and the brand new DJ Rex based on the uh, Ogus Cantina DJ. We have a resistance pack featuring Rey in her Jedi training outfit, Chewbacca, two new porgs in no new poses, as well as Hondo Anaka appearing in his Smuggler's Run attire from the ride. And then a First Order pack featuring Kylo Ren, a mountain trooper from the Galaxy's Edge novels, a mouse droid for the first time, and Commander Pyre from Star Wars Resistance. Pyre and the mouse droid are a big point of contention with a lot of people, because those are new characters that don't exist exclusively within Galaxy's Edge. Hondo Onaka is also kind of a thorn in the side for a lot of collectors because it's the first Hondo we've gotten. However, as he appeared in both Clone Wars and Rebels, it is likely we'll get other Hondos. So, most likely for me, I'm hoping that I can get all three sets because I do love theme parks and I love the world of Galaxy's Edge and the world of Batu that's been built, and I do want those figures in my collection. But personally, I really want to get the DJ Rex because he's the original droid from Star Tours, the first Disney Star Wars attraction. So overall, these sets are, you know, complicated. I can't quite get them yet, so I'm hoping that in the future I can do a video on them uh, because I think it's interesting to have big old multi-packs for theme park exclusives. Kicking off the GameStop exclusives is the Imperial Jump Trooper. This guy was featured in Star Wars Rebels and has a very cool look. Backpack, jetpack, whatever you want to call it. Really cool look, really cool figure, one that I kind of forgot existed until I pulled him out for the video. A 4 out of 5 for sure, and kind of a predecessor to the First Order Jet Trooper now thinking about it. The other two GameStop exclusives this year is the Second Sister Inquisitor Carbonized version. See previous Carbonized segment for info of why I didn't get that. And the Purge Trooper Commander from Jedi Fallen Order. I really wanted the Purge Trooper, but they never went up on the GameStop website outside of a bundle with Jedi Fallen Order, and the stores in my area never got any, so hopefully he gets re-release and be able to find one because I did really want to get one. It just wasn't in the cards. 
Moving on to Target exclusives, we have Trash Compactor Luke Skywalker. I did not pick this figure up, as you can see here, I have the Luke Skywalker and Stormtrooper disguise from several years ago. No face print like the new Trash Compactor version that looks a lot better, but it matches the Han that doesn't have face print, so it's kind of where I went with that. The next Target exclusive is the carbonized version of the Mandalorian. See previous carbonized info. I'm just taking one last look, sir, at my friends. The next Target exclusive I actually picked up, uh, this is the C-3PO and Babu Frick from Rise of Skywalker. C-3PO is mostly the same 3PO we usually have, except he now has a removable back helmet and cool eye-changing paint that when he gets cold his eyes turn red, as well as including Chewbacca's bowcaster and bandolier. I also included Ray's staff, which came with the Ray and Dio figure, for a little bit more movie accuracy. He also includes Babu Frick, a breakout character from the film, who is really cool and actually articulated. So a really fantastic release, and definitely a 4 out of 5. The final Target exclusive of 2019 is the First Order Elite Snowtrooper, uh, which was released in a mystery box as well as a single release, and I picked up neither. I wasn't that interested. I doubt even Master Qui-Gon Jinn could have prepared a Jedi for this. Clone Commander Obi-Wan Kenobi is a Walgreens exclusive, fantastic release. He reuses a lot of parts, that being the Clone Trooper body, but the new soft goods on top of the, you know, modified lightsaber blade, in addition to a very, very good Obi-Wan Kenobi head, takes this Legends character from the 2003 Clone Wars series and brings him into the Black Series line, and I'm super happy about that. Overall, 4 out of 5. First Walmart exclusive, Carbonized Jet Trooper, need I say more? I'm taking Captain Solo and his friends. You can either profit by this, or be destroyed. Luke Skywalker, in his Jedi Knight appearance from the beginning of Return of the Jedi, finally makes it into the line. While reusing a lot of parts from the older 2014 Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker, the new head sculpt that doesn't photograph well whatsoever, just trust me, it's good, is great. The new cloak, all the pieces, awesome release. Though a Walmart exclusive that never hit stores in my area, at least I was able to order it for pickup. 4 out of 5. Walmart exclusive Spirit Yoda or Force Ghost Yoda is something I just passed on because I didn't need it. Uh, I didn't get the Spirit Obi-Wan either, so just wasn't a big deal. Wrapping up some loose ends with convention exclusives, for San Diego Comic-Con 2019 we had a special edition Sith Trooper with extra weapons. Uh, we had a Kenner tribute Boba Fett where the 6-inch Boba Fett was painted as the Kenner colors of the original you know, Kenner figure. And then we had two Celebration uh, exclusives, which were Darth Maul and Obi-Wan Kenobi on Phantom Menace vintage cards. In no particular order, here's my top 10 figures of the year. Uh, not all of these were fives, a couple of these were fours from an objective standpoint, but they, they just really loved them. Uh, we've got Commander Fox, Chopper, Rey, Dryden Voss, Aphra, Luke, uh, Comic Luke, Cara Dune, Mandalorian, Heavy Mandalorian, and Chewbacca with 3PO. The 3PO is just an accessory to Chewbacca. I really love that Chewbacca a lot. It's my preferred look. So I hope you all enjoyed this look back at 2019 of Star Wars The Black Series. This is a line that I have been collecting since day one, and I'm glad to see it kind of evolve and become truly, uh, truly special. And I think that going forward, it's going to be a very great toy line. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. As a Star Wars collector myself, I did collect three and three quarter inch figures for a very long time. Uh, it's fun having vehicles and interactions, but I do like the detail and the intricacy of the six inch line, as well as the photo reel look. I think that it really is captured well in this. And it's nice that these figures can kind of coexist in my collection alongside Marvel, Power Rangers, um, DC, and etc. So overall, I, I think this year's lineup was really strong and really fantastic. And yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think of the 2019 line of Star Wars Black Series, and if you want to see more Star Wars videos on the channel, um, this is kind of a little bit of a testing ground. Also be sure to hit like and hit subscribe to keep up with future videos. There are plenty more retrospectives coming this month, looking back at 2019 in action figures. And stay tuned for anything new that may be coming up, and follow me on Twitter at sign 12 Check out my awesome graphic designer, Ryan Darkloss 643 on Twitter at Darkloss 643 He does art commissions, he did the fantastic logo for this video, which I really appreciate. And stay tuned for Hero Club at Hero-Club.com for more Star Wars news and content. So until next time, this is Santa saying goodbye.